Right peeps, just pulled up to Mr. Andy Ansar's house. This is the first debut podcast for the Rush Athletics channel. This is the Born to Fly podcast. Hopefully you guys can see me, got two angles rolling here. Andy is a massive inspiration for myself. I'm just gonna let him introduce himself and tell his story to you guys. I'm gonna give him a quick shout and we're just gonna, we're gonna keep it raw guys. I'm hoping everything's coming out fine. I haven't got my guys to check the audio and all that kind of stuff, but I'm, I'm super excited, man. This Hopefully he's at home. Rishi. Yes, Andy, I'm here, bro. Come in. What's happening? I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming now, bro. Let's do this. <laughs> he's basically having a problem with the door. Uh, here we go. <laughs> you know what? I should have told you I had to open the door before you go. I oh, know. How are you doing, brother? What's happening? I'm blessed, man. How are you doing? How's your comfort levels here? Good, good. Yeah, you can adjust your seat, get comfy. Man, how do the seats adjust? This on, is on decent. The side. They've been in the Model 3 before. Not the Model 3, man. Lovely cars, though. Well, listen, man. You're the first first dude on the podcast. Wicked. And um, I'm glad it's you, man. Wicked, man. Honestly, man. Like, uh, we, we've met a no, like a number of times, right? But I would say there's not many people that when I meet them, like I feel like some energy of inspiration. Your aura is sick. Your positivity is sick. And that's why I had to get you on, man. No, I respect Rush, man. I love your journey. You know, from day one when you was working in Thank the city. You, you remember? We've been in Barcelona. We spent some time oh, together. Oh, some good stories, We've man. We've had some great stories, man. And you know what? For me, it's all about everybody growing. It's about growth, man. And your growth has been phenomenal. And you know you know how much I love what you're doing. Trust, man. You're it's skipping. Deep. He's skipping as well, by the way. So, so we've got two angles here. Feel comfortable to Yeah, say, man. To but well, you are my inspiration. You are the reason why I'm skipping. You know? Oh man. You are the inspiration. I like, have seen where you came from. You came from one thing. You're like, I remember you telling me, and this skipping thing is the thing. You watch, and I'm gonna do it. And we a little meeting as well, do we? Yeah. About some sporting thing, and, and you just grew the whole thing out and it's just been phenomenal. But to the point where I go to my son's house and his missus is does skipping. Oh yeah. She's got the rushy stuff. She's and then this company wanted her, she saw some of her videos, they wanted her to use their ropes. She said, I can't use their ropes. Oh. After using the rushy athletic stuff, I can't use nothing else. That's and deep. that's beautiful. That's sick, bro. It's sick. Mate, you're skipping, you're doing football, you're doing, you've got business, you're doing act, you've done acting. We need to try and get through this and we're going to try and do it in about, hopefully about 45. No dangers, let's do it. Let's I'm, do it. In, gonna, I'm looking forward to enjoying the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you been in the Model 3 before? No, Model 3, it's the first time being in it. Like, I've done the Model X. Yeah. I've actually got a Roadster on order, which oh, I have done man. for the last sort of three, two years. Yeah. So fingers crossed, I don't know when it's going to come, but it hopefully it will come. You're going to have to direct me, by the way. I'm go left, go left, go left. Yeah. Go left. Roadster, yeah? Yeah, That's man. That's going to be sick. We're going to have to do one of them, one of these again in the Roadster, man. Yeah, that would be the one. I so, don't know how much space is in it, though. Yeah, mate, for my legs, I don't know. How tall are you again? 5'9". <laughs> <laughs> Listen, anyway, let's get straight into this, man. Um, for the for the people at home or those even what, listening on the podcast that can't, maybe not watching the video and all that, um, how would you introduce like yourself, like in a nutshell, like someone who's just met you like at a meeting, yeah. and they haven't, yeah, don't know much about you? Because I, I would love to tell the people what you do, but I won't mm -hmm. do it justice. Do you know what I mean? It's crazy because I always say, like everyone goes to say, it's weird. I've got a name where everyone goes Andy Answer. I always use both names, yeah. right? And then obviously most people know me because of my choreography, mm -hmm. which is I'm working with the best sporting stars in the world That's it. for the last twenty years. Then if you go to another section of people, they'll just say unbelievable techers because yeah. I created a word that went massive on Sky TV on Soccer AM called, which was the techers segment. That's what we have to, we have to talk about this for a little bit. Which went huge. Everyone who knows the word techers, yeah, whoever's listening, watching, it came from this guy. 100 million percent, I don't care what anyone else says. Well, it's down, it's down now, it's in my Wikipedia, Wikipedia? it's in the Urban Dictionary, you got everything. Wikipedia, that's gangster. Yep. So did you, is that, is that like now yours, yeah? Like yeah. you're the guy who coined this term, isn't it? Yes, and I actually own the copyright to it, the, the intellectual oh, property sick. of Unbelievable Techers, which is when we bought the clothing out and everything. So yeah, we yeah. still own all the IP for Techers, the word Techers. Oh, what a, I use that all the time, I'm not gonna lie. No, it's, it's a brilliant <laughs> word and you know it's sometimes people will see me and they, they don't even call me Andy, they just they shout Techers, like that's techers. my name, it's crazy. So get so let's get let's get straight to the to the source, right? You are you are the guy. If if I'm anyone who's watching around the world anyway, uh, and listening, you are literally people. Every single person I reckon, most eighty like percent of the world has watched your work because if you're into football and you've seen a World Cup Nike advert, this guy, um, you have 
flipping choreo- like choreographed the whole thing. Yeah. You've worked with Cristiano Ronaldo, Zlatan, all the biggest stars, and you've created these amazing adverts around the world that billions of people have seen, bruv. So most people may not know you or heard of you or seen you, but they've, they've been attached or connected to your work in some sort, some way or another, right? Yeah, it's crazy. I, and do you know what? I did an um, interview with The Mill, which is a post-production house, and they said, how does it feel to have over 7 billion people watch your work? Oh, that's what, mate, this is what I'm saying. This is bigger than probably most directors, TV stars. Go straight, go straight. Go straight, yeah? Yeah, stay in this lane. It's, like, that is phenomenal, mate. When you when you put it down like that, man. And that was so, about eight years ago, by the way. Yeah. So it's crazy. So imagine what it is now. But it's really mad because everybody, when you talk to people about advertising and sports adverts, they'll all say, "Oh, I like this one. I remember that." And nine and nine point nine times out of ten, I've been a part of that. That's advert. what I mean, man. I remember some of the the earlier Nike adverts, and I used to just be like, "Do you know what?" They're sick, they're amazing. Like these are the ones that you probably didn't work sure. on. Yeah. Like um we're talking like ninety six or something like yeah. But then when the when the Yoga Benito ones dropped, the early days that you yes. were done, and then it started to have this new kind of flair to football and like you just wanted to go out, brother, and just play and do skills and, and you put the I like to say, I don't know if it's a tagline you ever use, but I, I like to say that you guys bring sports to life. So when people talk to me like, Who what you got on the podcast? I say I've got this guy called Andy and I, I always have that tagline in there because I'm like, this is the guy that makes you feel something when you watch an advert or some kind of sporting thing. I think that was key for me was how can... Because I, I was a fan of the airport and things like that. Yeah. And then it was always a passion, like, how can we bring this alive? Mm. Bring it alive with authenticity, but a little bit of panache as well where people can hold on to things. Because a lot of the time before it was just seeing these hero players. Yeah. Not exactly seeing loads of skills and ability. It's like, oh I saw Ronaldo, I saw Ronaldinho. But it was about bringing it alive, not just see them as individuals. How do you engage people in the commercial? And that's what I've, I've, I'm fortunate and grateful to be able to have had that opportunity yeah. to bring it alive. And then for people, it to resonate with people and then for it to grow and keep going for the last 20 years. It's mad, man. Like, um, by the way, I just noticed there's a bit of shadows and stuff coming through, guys. We're just we're getting some good weather, by the way, in, in England. Great weather. Like, uh, I'm gonna have to. This is a pilot show, by the way. Yeah, so maybe I might need to do it later on in the day when the sun's not above us. But yeah, yeah. All good. Um, hopefully you guys are listening, and watching, watching all comfortable. Listen, mate. Uh, there's a question that I had. Right? Are you the first, or one of the first at least, to create this um, niche within your uh, advert space to say you're a sports choreographer? Yeah, I am the first to say I was a sports choreographer because before. Um, so companies would just directors would just do it mm-hmm. or um, I remember there was Brian Marwood who used to work for Nike he used to do the he worked for Nike and because he played for Arsenal he would sort of tell the players what to do right. but what I did when I came into the industry it was took it to a different level right so I started a dream team and then from yeah, there team, yeah. everything grew I just took it to a different level and created the tagline of a football choreographer a sports choreographer because there was no such thing that's it it didn't exist before. so when you when you guys did dream team is that where you learned camera yeah and that's where I learned the camera because dream team was low budget so I learned, in, I went to Dream Team at 30 years old to learn the industry. Right. And it was there that I learned everything. Because there was no budget, I was able to go across all different things and learn different things in different sections of the advertising. Not Then it weren't advertising, of the film industry. Mm-hmm. And that's what was great about it. It was a great learning place for me. Did you, did you ever do anything um, behind the camera before then? No, I've never ever done anything behind the camera. It was That's then mental. I went to Dream Team in front of the camera to learn and understand what happens yeah. in terms of filming, how does filming work. And then I found myself advising directors how to shoot the football scenes. This is what's mad though. So what was what was the step for you to say, all right, you're you're young and the answer, right, thirty years old. We haven't even touched on your, your playing days, but like you you'd finished playing, right, at this yep. point? Just retired. You just retired, so we'll get into all that as well. But you just retired. What made you step, like, think of that step to think, you know what, I've done, I'm doing acting now. So, Dream Team, for anyone watching, listening again, is was a popular, massive show here in the UK. Um, it was, it was it, like, that show was so addictive, man. Cult it was, following, Sky White, it was cult following. It was literally like, yeah, it was just a football, it was about a football team, obviously, like, uh, you need to Google it, but 
try and watch it as well, but football team, loads of drama, loads of people getting killed and football. That was the thing, you know. <laughs> There's a the worse team to play for because yeah. people always died. Everyone died in the show, man. Anyone, anyone good anyway. But um, anyway, so you, you did this, but then whilst you're doing this, like, what made you think, all right, sports on screen, this, business, I want to become the leading guy to, to lead directors the right way in creating adverts? I think what happened when I was at Dream Team, so within six months, um, the exec producer approached me and said, look, everybody's talking about it, all my directors. Yeah. I want to give you a role to be a f to work in the football and to start being, I call you a football, um, football producer. Mm. So I started to produce the football and then from there I started to storyline the show with the team of writers oh, and everything just grew. And then what happened was after about, I think it's six years at Dream Team, I got... I got approached to have a meeting with Danny Cannon. He was over from Hollywood. He was doing a movie called Goal. Oh, Goal, of course, everyone knows yeah. that film, yeah. So I went into town, had a meeting with him, and he said, Dan, listen, I've been doing CSI. I've left CSI. I want, I'm doing a movie called Goal. It's a three-part movie. I'm only doing one, but I want you to come and join me on this one. He said, I can't guarantee you the other two because I don't know if I'm doing them, but I promise you it will change your life. That's and I said, hard. and the first thing, he said, the first thing I'm going to do is take you to Hollywood. How old were you then? I was 36 and I was like, I looked this, at this him. This is your big break. Yeah, yeah this was my big break. I looked at him and I believed him. I believed him because he was, looked me in the eyes when he said it. I came out of that meeting and sent an email to Jane Hewlam resigning from my role at Dream Team. Mm -hmm. That was a hard thing to do, but I needed to take the risk right. because I believed in my own ability. And that's why I always say to people, believe in yourself. You have to take risks in you order to, to achieve. You've got to. Day one as well, man. You've got to. Yeah. And if you look at what I did, I resigned for after that meeting, look at what your journey, what yeah. you did. Yeah. You, you had a good job, you were stable in your job. Solid, stable. But you, you believed in what you, was going, what you was doing, you believed in yourself, yeah. and then you made that investment into yourself. Definitely. To chase your dream. It's a big step doing that, anyway, especially when you've got something good on one side, and then something else you don't know nothing about, but you, yeah. you've got this hunch, this feeling. But like, what? When you when you did this now, you've done this. You've done gold, and gold must have been an incredible experience. Yeah. Um, what then then drove you to think even bigger, like sports on screen? This is the craziest model thing. Agency and yeah. Biggest agency for the craziest people. thing. When I was in Hollywood, so I was I mixed with some big people, and it's yeah. like name dropping and everything. But there were people like Jason Statham, yeah. Will Smith, Fifty Sick. Cent, Heavy <laughs> D, God bless him, who's passed away. Neil Long, Nicole Murphy, um, Daphne Wyans. You name them, those are people that I got to hang with. Mad. So they gave me the insight. And one day we were talking, me and some of the guys, and they said, what do you actually do? And I explained to them what I do in my job. And then they said, what do you earn? And I explained to them, they said, are you serious? You only earn that and you do that. Right. What is your business model? Got you. And then we sat and we worked out a business model. So these are the people that kind of just led you down the right path. The right path. Thinking bigger, is it? Thinking bigger. Right. Thinking bigger and self-value. Yeah. Then, I, I, then they helped me put some stuff together in terms of a framework of a site. Mm -hmm. When I left LA to come back to England, it was like, okay, press the button, go for it. And so my first company was called Soccer on Screen because it developed in America. So the word soccer was the name of the company. That's mad, all right. How crazy is that? Yeah, yeah. So that's why it was called Soccer on Screen. That sounds pretty catchy. And then well. when I got back into England, I got a call within three weeks from Nike, which was, I never had a call from Nike. What? Yep, they called and they wanted me to do a commercial with them with Arsenal Football. No, it was actually a photo shoot with Arsenal Football Club. They called, they said, oh, we want this, this. What's your rate? I told them a rate, which yeah. was, what I was earning a week, yeah. that was my day rate. Okay, got you. So what I was earning a week in the movie, uh -huh. I was charging as a day rate. You know what, they, they rang, I told them. Yeah. They said, oh great, but we can't afford that and put the phone down. Oh really? Okay. I was sweating. <laughs> but I had to stand by what I believed in, my worth. Yeah. Within two hours I got a call back. We, can, we found the money, That's we want to do good, it. That's good man, mate. It was a life changer, do it left here. That's cool. It was a life changer. That's crazy. That's crazy, that takes a lot of, uh, lot of balls, man. But I had to say no <laughs> Nike and calls, believe man, in it. I'm yeah. not gonna lie, man, if Nike called me and said, do something with, with skipping with our train, I'd, yep. do, I'd do it for free, because I love Nike. But I mean, Now you understand massive. how big a step it was that yeah. I took by saying no. Yeah, 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 that's massive. And then that same producer who had called me, I worked with him consistently, I'm telling you now, for four years. Mm -hmm. It, like the work never stopped, the it just built yeah. and built and built. Yeah. And that was, and it's strange because it, that came from saying no. 
It came from saying no, and knowing that I knew my worth because it had been implanted in me from being in America, you are worth this. Yeah. Because what you do, and what the benefits are for what you do to the, to the brand and the company, are worth that much to them, so therefore your value is this. Got you. So it's, it's self-worth and self-value. But it's, yeah, again, you have to work that out. What do I do and what is my worth in, in the grand scale of things? At this, at this moment, are you working on your own? Have you got a little small team developing? Or? So even now, right now, we have 12 employees now. As we see, the company is now sports on screen. We employ 12 full-time people. Yeah. We have a model agency that has over 3,000 sports models. Damn. We have I used offices. to be one of them, yeah. by the way. You know <laughs> that. I haven't mentioned that on the camera. Good yet, times. Good times, man. Great I've got, times. I've got to mention that, man. I'll tell you what, yeah, there was, um, there was a moment in my life, this was, this was 2012, where I'd, I'd come back from Argentina, right? And um, got back into working mode and stuff. Here. Yes. And, and you, I mean, I didn't really know you growing up. Like, obviously, we met through Tommy, right? Yeah. So, Tommy, big up to Tommy if he's listening or watching. But um, I used to see Tommy do, all doing these little adverts and stuff. Yeah. Right? And I was. I'm going to go left. I was so envious because I was like. Because obviously we play football together a lot, and I was like, "Mate, how are you getting these gigs, man? This is phenomenal." He's posting these pictures with Torres yes. and Lampard and all these big boy players, and um, he goes, "Bro, there's this guy I want you to meet him, man. Andy Ansar, he's an amazing guy." Blah blah blah, and and every every time I heard that name, I was like, "Where can I get to meet this guy?" And then anyway, Tommy said to me, he "Goes, there's a there's a casting. You gotta come down." And I remember I went down to the casting and I was bricking it. Like my legs were shaking doing that little the little you, you the, yeah little, that routine. You do a little routine, then you re, you video it in and out of the cones and this stuff used to be bread and butter for me like on a pitch or whatever I'd be yeah. just doing it for fun being filmed being in an indoor little thing and little indoor football and things I've never like you know not used to and they had to do, they had to do this little circuit right That's and I was right. hitting the cones over smashing <laughs> things and then it was embarrassing I walked out and I was like yeah, I mean, you weren't there by the way that day it was, uh, it was another couple of your colleagues but um, I came out and I was like I've screwed it man like that my one my one chance you know it's done and then uh, on my birthday my my uh, 20 I want to say 25th no 26th birthday yeah I got a phone call literally saying are you available tomorrow to come to Barcelona and mate I remember sitting at dinner and I was, I was with my parents and stuff and everyone in my family and stuff and I was like mate I cannot believe what I, literally I was like shaking because for me it was like the, the big the bit that my biggest dream had just come alive from yeah and it was like you're gonna be shooting for Nike and uh, yeah if you're ready let's go tomorrow so literally the next day I had to call up work and and I was on a first class flight. I remember the, the experience, you know, like, the, yes. it was so good. It was so professional. Got into the hotel, best hotel I ever stayed in my life, by the way. And then every day, six in the morning starts or five yep. you get up. Early up, doors. Early doors till late in the evening. Then you still have a bit of fun in the evening. That's so right. Get together. And, and that's when I met you for the first time, funny enough. It's crazy, isn't it? So we hadn't met before. Yep. And then I met you. It's still right. And there was only car. a couple of English lads and it was just, it was just yourself. And that is when I got a chance to see how you work, man. And I've got to say, man, like that's when, the, when I talk about the energy and stuff, you were, you're so good with your man management in terms of like how they call it man management, but pers personal skills, how you treat people is so smart, mate. And like, it's like, you get the best out of all your team, all your models, they look up to you, but at the same time, you, you're tough. At the same time, you're, you, you know exactly what to say when someone's struggling. There was times when I felt like I was struggling. Um, and there was one day, do you remember, there was one day I had to shoot a bloody whole scene, right? Yes, And we yes. did that scene 50 million times. Is that and on the gravel pitching? The gravel yes, pitch. yes, and yes. And blisters, there was no socks, there was like, you know, it was, it was That's a crazy right, because it was a made up to look like Brazil, Brazil. that's it. It was meant to look like Favela, it was in, yes. it was in Barcelona. And, and that was, again, another crazy experience. But the way you handled me, considering it was my first ever time on camera, and you know we're doing football, which is something I used to love, and I still of love course. obviously. But it's something that was so natural to me, and then became unnatural yeah. in a weird way. I mean, I think because when the camera's in your face and you, everybody on the set is looking at you, yeah. and you're the focus. It is on. It's not a natural. It's not a natural thing. Where's this McAdee's by the way? Oh, we have to go round. Let's, Let's go keep around. going round. Where's the McDonald's part of it? Or something. I think I saw a prep, but I don't know if There's a prep, but there's not a drive through I know. Let's come out. Let's go round and come out, and we will go to the McDonald's drive through But you're saying yes. Yeah, being in front of camera is so different to just... I'm telling you, like it's not normal. Else, it? Even professional footballers struggle being in front of camera, doing what they do naturally in front of 70,000 people week yeah. in, week out. I saw it happen, actually. On that on that set, I think we had Bernardo, yes. one of those guys, and, and you know, talented, amazing footballer. But there was things that even he was unable to do that the models could do, for example. Exactly. And that's obviously why you have the doubles and yep. and, get, and getting into that, actually. Like, so when you, when you have these talents on, you know, on set, 
do you ever get nervous around anyone before you met them? Um, no, it's kind of strange because it, it, I see it as a job and it's kind of strange because people always ask that question but do you know what, I, I've, I never have done. The only, I can say only once ever have I been nervous and it was a nervous excitement and that was when I met Pele. You met Pele? And I had to work with him for a whole day in Brazil. Right. Let's go left. That was, I was doing sick. a film called Mike Bassett, England Manager in 2001. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's and good films, man. I spent a whole day with Pele, and when he when I first met him in the morning, when he had to introduce me because I was with him for the whole day, yeah. I was so my body was shaking because he had been my hero as a kid. So it was unbelievable. Let's go left. That is an insane meet. Unbelievable. I thought you were going to say right. I know you met Ronaldinho as well. Yeah. I mean, I that lane, Ronaldinho, yeah. Pele, Cristiano Ronaldo. Who who would you say? Um, okay, so Pele Pele is the one that kind of got you a little bit nervous, excited. But who was the one that you would say that you worked with, and their personality was different to what you imagined it to be. I think, do you know, it's interesting in because... A good, in a good way, I guess. Because Cristiano, I grew up with, I grew, I've, he's grown up and I've grown up, as he, I've been with him as he's Since grown he's up. Since he's been like 18, So right? from his 18 going yeah. through, so I've seen him grow, so he's always been who I thought he would be. Yeah. But he, I would say, people outside of football don't know who Cristiano Ronaldo is. Right. Because Cristiano Ronaldo, everyone's got this thing, yeah, he's a good-looking guy, he grooms himself, there's We're nothing wrong with that. Everybody kind of thinks he's, oh, Cristiano Ronaldo's Mike got their Ronaldo. opinion on him. But the nicest, kindest, funniest person you're going to meet. Do you know what, man? And I, I, I can completely, like, you can already, he's already done Piers Morgan interviews. Yes. And I think he's shown a lot more that side. Yeah. And you see a lot more now people saying, you know what, actually, like we got this guy wrong in a weird way like Trust those me. who are not United supporters yeah. for example like they would always think he's a little bit arrogant and yeah. all that kind of stuff right but you, if you're a proper pure football dude doesn't matter if you didn't ever support Man United you know that guy works like a machine but the way he carries himself off the pitch is phenomenal right exactly and when you become a superstar like he is the biggest sports star in the world yeah you're guarded around people because you have to be especially now with social media and stories that fly about yeah. but until when you're in someone's personal space and you see the real person for not like just unreal unreal and you can imagine being him everywhere you go there's a camera in your face someone wants to touch you picture with you it is crazy and, and the thing is that when i see you posting pictures up with him i'm even just i sit there and i'm just like Look how close this guy is to Cristiano Ronaldo, and you're just casual with it. You're just like you just post a nice little picture, and you're just just there having a nice conversation. And that like, that again just brings me back to the whole point about you is that you're you're so connected to some of the biggest people, and you're sitting here in my car, and yet I feel like I'm just talking to a good friend. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, but we are good friends. We are good let's friends. Not, <laughs> let's not get it, let's not get it twisted. Not we are twisted, good friends. But in the sense that I'm not here like thinking yeah. that. Oh, my oh God, we this. can do a left to go to that, that drive through. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sitting here thinking, oh my days, like, I need to impress you, or I need to, you make me feel like you're just normal. Yeah. See what I'm saying? If you were to sort of meet, so let's say a superstar's agent, for mm -hmm. example, and you have a meeting with them. Yeah. Um, yeah, this will be a bit long, but we'll try it. We can try it, let's go for it. Yeah. You know, you, you, may, you may get that feeling where, oh yeah, this guy is so close to these people. Yeah. Um, and then you may have to, I think that you have to act a certain way to get in their good books. And to be fair with you, in your line of business, like, I'm guessing you do meet people that are like that with you just simply because you're just so connected. Yeah, you do get that. But my thing is, is that everyone you have to treat as individuals. Mm -hmm. And I think, and time is short. I always say time is short in people's company. So always be engaged in the moment. Always be, if you get time with someone, be engaged in that moment. Don't be distant. Because you don't know when your next time you're going to have with that person. Definitely. And it's fundamental. You've you got to value any time you have with any individual. And I think that's key. And, and what I think you find in film, especially in the filming industry, is people are so set on them that they don't engage. It's like, I'll do that and I go and I'll do that. It's kind of like, I want to make it to the top. Yeah. And I've not come from that kind of world. I'm, I've come from a world where I value you and I value your conversation. And I, I've tried to maintain that throughout my career, all the way through, it's is have them yeah, values. It's an amazing skill you got, mate. Like I said, man, the people skills you got, you're working with what you've worked with maybe thousands and thousands of models, you've got 3,000 on your books. Yeah. You work with hundreds, if not thousands, of talent, heroes, all the kind of major superstars. Um, you've got to have a certain skill that people don't possess, man. And you think you've got that, man, which is just, I how, appreciate to, just that. how to get the best out of everyone, make everyone feel comfortable and manage people, big directors, their expectations. You've got a lot on your shoulders, man. Yeah. It's mad. Like, what, what's, what, you know, we don't want to talk about too many crazy stories, but like in terms of like, what's gone not to plan or what's not gone... 
how a director wanted and how, how you know, how did I you think, handle it? I think the biggest one was we did a spot, it's the biggest commercial in the world, right the future. It was a yeah. World oh, Cup spot where habit. Wayne Rooney, if he messes up, you see him he's in, in, the, the caravan, he's in a caravan, he? he becomes yeah. a traveller and everything like that. spot, when I say everything that could go wrong, went wrong. Yeah. We are, we're, in, we're in Spain, in Madrid, and the worst rain ever in 35 years storm happens. The night before, we flown Drogba and, um, what is it, yeah, Drogba came in and Cannavaro had been flown in yeah, to yeah. shoot. The pitch is unplayable. They stood there and everyone, we can't shoot. Damn. Two metre puddles on the football pitch. Anything you can imagine. Wayne Rooney is come back from England. He's mm -hmm. due to shoot. You've got four or so locations on lockdown. Something happens at home for Wayne Rooney. He can't come and shoot. So everything was going wrong. And, and the, how you manage like the night people, like the big boys? The man, big boys it, it was one of those where you, you're saying to yourself, this commercial is either going to make I will never, we'll never work again in the industry <laughs> or it's going to go the other way where we become heroes within this industry. Yeah, yeah. And we were fortunate, fortunate enough that it became the biggest commercial ever. It that, was so successful. That commercial was next level. I was just going to come on to that actually. Yeah, what's the most favourite one you've worked on? So I guess in the most difficult one turned out to be what? I'm one of the, one of the most successful it is, it, is the most, it is the most successful one. Right but the Future was sick. Man. Of late, I'll tell you what I've loved. Of late. There's been a lot, but one of the ones that really resonated was The Londoner. The Londoner was the one with Skepta and everybody in it, where he's riding yeah, on the Boris bike. Yeah, 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 that was massive. Because it, because I'm from London, I'm yeah. a Londoner, so it really resonates with you. And all the things, all the different elements of it, we had Michael Dapper in there. Everybody yeah. was in it. Huge, huge commercial. Mate, you've done some, you've done some big things, man. I mean, the, the that side of it is one story. Let's go back a little bit, man. I mean, let's talk about like you getting into football. Like was was that your idea? Was it football retirement end of life? As yeah, or it was. Did you have this planned out? All I ever to, wanted to be was yeah? a professional footballer. All I ever wanted to be I used to write in my school books. I just loved football, and that was my dream. Was I've got to be a professional You're a striker, footballer? Right? So I, well, right wing come striker. Yeah, yeah, and I think I signed my first club was Charlton. I signed for Charlton at eleven years old, and then I went to Crystal Palace at seventeen because at sixteen I was. You know, you have to, you turn into them days, it was like YTS Apprentice, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it was hard work. So my option was, I'm staying at school, I'm not doing that. <laughs> and I wasn't doing that. So then at 17, I signed professional for Crystal Palace Football Club, which was awesome. That's crazy, man. With Ian Wright being yeah, there, yeah, Andy players. Gray, all them players were at Crystal Palace at the time. And obviously they're older than me. I think we're older than here, man. Yeah. What are you after, man? A be... latte would be awesome. Latte's good, yeah. How do you like to drive so far, man? It's wicked, man. The cars are nice, you know. You know, I mean, because of my, my we got to get another car. My daughters have gone out in theirs. I've got to get another car and the missus. And I was like, shall we get one? I might get one of these, you know. Which, they look all right. They're wicked, man. They're comfy, man. The back seats are all right, you know. Yeah. Like, there's enough space. And it stays clean as well, doesn't it? Pretty clean, man. Not going to lie. How did you get on with the seats? Do you have to wash them down? No, I think I gave them a little wipe before you got here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but otherwise, they're all right, man. Have you got the charger built into your into house? Into the house, yeah. Yeah, it's wicked. Yeah, so it's decent. And how long does it take to charge? My, my electricity is a bit slow because I've got the HQ running on the, on the same grid. Yeah, yeah. So can I take your order? Yeah, sure. Can I get a latte, please? Is that medium? Yes, medium? please. Medium, yeah. And yeah. I will get a uh, water and, um, and a Coke Zero, if that's all right. And is that everything for you? That's everything, thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. And how many miles do you get out of this? I get about 240 realistically. It's it says it's 340. Yeah. But the way you drive it, it just makes yeah. you go a bit crazy because you, you want to put the autopilot on. as well, it? You put the music on yeah. and it's using battery like a phone, right? It's like when you've got all the apps on. Yeah, it says it's about 340 miles when you buy it. Okay. But it's, it's not really, it's not really because you just get excited. It's nice though, man. I like them. I like them. So what did you have extras done? You had some black handles. I got, I got the, yeah, so this used to all, the, the trim used to be chrome. Yep. That all became black. Did you get it wrapped? I got it wrapped as yeah, well, yeah. yeah. So it used to be glossy. It used to be like a little, maybe like Who did you that. take it to to wrap it? Have you heard of GVE? No, where are they? Uxbridge, they're sick, you know. I should have probably come to you firstly. Yeah, you could you... have, I'll just take it straight to Toro Wrapped. Yeah, you got the main guys, haven't you? Yeah. And like, he'll sort, he does do, anyone through me, he'll sort you out. Oh uh, yeah, do you know what? I actually went through Tommy, funny enough. Yeah. Because <laughs> Tommy's got his, uh, his little Tesla hookup there. That's well. right, yeah. So they, those guys hooked me up, actually, because I did a little YouTube collab thing with good. them. Good. Um, I think they did a good job. 
and I have to go see them soon as well to get like any touch-ups done. So they're happy, yeah, yeah. happy to come sort so it. So they done all your Russia athletics in here. And everything. Yeah, this was just a nice little decal. Yeah, yeah. The mats I got online anyway. They were okay, Gucci. wicked. Um, but I know you like your cars, man. Yeah, I love my cars, man. So you got you a Porsche. Know that. You got a Porsche. I got my G wagon, and the G wagon sick. That's wrapped yeah. as well, isn't it? No, no, that one. That's a new one. That one. That's I've a new one. There. That's a new one. Uh, that one's a year old. I just got that one. Oh, it's the latest weird. one, and it drives like a like a. It's just like an aeroplane. It's crazy. It's a crazy ride. Mate, I wanna I wanna get back into this year because yeah. you're you've taken us through the steps. You're now a footballer. You're you're young, energetic dude. South London, I'm guessing it wasn't like the, the usual kind of easy upbringings and all that kind of stuff. And you're no. now a footballer. And how have you handled that amongst some friends who are not doing the same or would love to do what you're doing? Like, what's it like growing up, man, in that kind of It, it was hard. This is the 80s, yeah? Yeah, in the 80s, it was hard because obviously I, came, I grew up as a single parent family. My mum brought us up. Hmm. So from the age of 11, my mum had brought up three boys. So it was a case that I grew up quick. Respect the mum. You know, I grew up quick. So. Hmm. Football was like, I've got to make it. And then, obviously, I've got my street friends who have a different mentality. Yeah. And some of them were good at football as well, but they were going down different pathways, especially one of my good, good friends. He went one way and I went down my football pathway still. And it was hard keeping on it because I was trying to mix the two, be with my friends and play football. So sometimes there'll be times where I'd get in at four in the morning on a weeknight mm. and then be at Ian Wright's house at night out like 8 30 to go to training and just sleep all the way to training <laughs> and he'd be like but Ian would tell me straight he said listen you gotta stop your rubbish you need to just focus yeah. on the football and that's he, one thing on about it, yeah? Ian Wright he's that uh, he was always on it he was on it yeah and he used to, honestly he used to like we'd finish training I'd be with the reserves he'd be the first team and he and sometimes I'd just quickly go in and change he'd come in and say well we you get you get your kit back on we're doing extras and I'd have to change back into a kit yeah. after showering and everything and go and do extras. Because he used to drive me home as well. He didn't used to play with me, but he used to be on me. So, so, so was he, a kept, he kept you pretty steady, yeah? Yeah, definitely. Like he, Him, Tony Finnegan. Yeah. I had some good guys looking after me from when I was young. And then that's when I had to just focus. There you go. Oh, You've shit. gone past him. <laughs> <laughs> I was like... Hi, How you doing? Would you like some sugar? Do you want some sugar, man? Um, one, please. There you go, man. Cheers, but which one's it? Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna. You're Coke Zero, man. I don't even know why I bought this. To be fair, I've just. In the mornings. Not in the mornings, really. Thank you. I've Cheers. Only, I've only just started becoming a morning person. Oh, enough. really? I've switched my game around. What was, do you mean? Like, I was I was going to sleep at 4 a.m. every day and wake oh, up. Oh, work. Like, work, yeah. And then um, I've just started now going to the gym in the morning. Yeah, which yeah. Which I never used to do. I used to go to the gym in the evenings. Wow. I used to go to the gym at like midnight, sometimes 11 o'clock. Really? 24 hour gym, yeah. That's what my days used to be crazy, man. Because you dedicate the day to doing your business. Mm. Yeah, I hear you. But you got to do I mean, it. Basically, used to used to concentrate on the on the sort of admin go content. Straight down. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, you could direct me back however you wish, man. Go but straight like, down. <clears throat> by the time everything would finish up, then it was like I need to put it to the work and then. But like, it's better. I'm, I feel like you're a morning person, isn't it? Yeah, I'm a morning person. Already, I've done gym and everything. Yeah, so my, my missus, we've done gym, so we have the gym at home. So we've already done our gym workout, so I start my day. The reason Jesus. being is that I know that my emails and my phone go crazy, so I always do things first thing in the morning. Your gym is um, pretty nice, man. Yeah, it's wicked, man. Um, so, right, okay, so you're footballer now, you're doing pretty well. Yeah. And are you just thinking at that moment that... You know, I'm guessing obviously things like sports on screen not even in your mind right now. No. But are you just thinking football and that's your life and, and your that set? Is. I'm thinking football, focus on football and make it happen. But being a footballer then was hard because people who you thought were your friends outside that you grew up with become resentful. Mm. They act differently towards you. So you kind of have to tighten your circle because not everyone wants you to succeed. And then on top of that, the system and the infrastructure in terms of football itself mm. We used to go through a lot of racism. It didn't want black players in it. It wasn't geared for black people to be successful within that infrastructure. Yeah. So we was there during the transition. So imagine your black players needed to become superstars in order to get acceptance from teammates. That's crazy, man. Which is insane. I remember when we was at Palace, we had, there'll be black players at this side and white players, certain older white players would have a table and sit 
a complete opposite side uh, drinking coffee and they, the look was like murder. They wanted to kill the black players. But they were happy to be alongside them and win games and collect bonus money course. when Ian Wright's scoring goals. It was, it was literally That's that. Nuts, man. It was crazy. It was insane. You imagine being, you train with someone and after training, you're, you might be playing pool, listening to music, and there, there's like a group of six or seven sat at a table, drinking tea, eating toast and so forth, just looking at you with hatred. Yet you've got to play in the same team. That's what it was like at Crystal Palace and with certain players. That is nuts. You know, and Steve Koppel was the best manager ever because he broke that system. Steve Koppel's a G, man. He broke that system. He wasn't having it. He made sure he broke that system. How do you how do you kind of kind of because you started a family quite young yeah yeah if I'm not mistaken I was 25 when I started my family yeah at this point you're you're still playing football still playing football we and the thing is is that we had three kids in 14 months I was just gonna say because you have you got twins yep so Zach was so, born first yeah. and then when he was eight months old my wife was pregnant with the twins so we had in 14 months we had three kids that's mad it was insane. I remember coming home from training, having to unplug the house phone and everything because we couldn't hear from, we didn't want to hear from nobody. It was too hard. Let's stay in this lane here. We're going to go straight. Sweet. So your, your footballing days, how did they kind of come to an end? Knee injury. So I yeah. got a knee injury against Reading and it was bad. It was really bad and I should have retired, hmm. but I carried on playing. But when I got, this happened when I was 24, 25. Young, man. young and then I, but I carried on playing I could have taken the retirement money but, but retire, retirement money for early like for ending my career early but I was like saying around right late yes, I was like no I love this game too much I love the game too much I'm going to keep playing for as long as I can so you just crushed the knee I just crushed the knee until I was 30 and it was like I can't do it no more I've uh, got to step away from it but you know I, I played football because I loved the game yeah. not for money it was yeah. a love it was a because the money yeah the money was good but it wasn't great like it is now go no go straight down to your left here just yeah, here right. but it was good money but it wasn't what you're looking what the players are earning now it wasn't that kind of money it wasn't that kind of money no superstar money yeah next level money isn't it right now it's right now it's crazy money go left here actually what, we'll um, go up and then spin around yeah so you know you're, so you're playing football you stop playing football now yeah was there any a point where you started to think i've got three kids i've got family like, what, what, what am I doing now? Man, it was hard. Come? So, you know what? I was very clever in my transition. What I did was, from uh, my Brighton Hove Albion was my last pro club. Yeah. So, I left Brighton Hove Albion to sign for, to go part-time at Farnborough Football Club. Farnborough, and yeah. luckily, from that transition, because I was going in as a top player at Farnborough part-time football. Yeah. I signed a contract for the same amount of money I was on at Brighton Football Club. Oh, really? But okay. I was part-time and it afforded me the ability to go and work at Dream Team for £50 a day and doing two days a week to start with, sometimes one day a week as an extra right. to learn the industry. Man, that worked out nicely, didn't it? It worked but out did, so how well. How did Dream Team kind of fall into your kind of lap or how did you go after it? Man, I was so grateful. I played with a player called Paul Linger yeah. who's just recovering from cancer, by the way. He's doing really well. God bless him. Yeah. So he, I played with him at Brighton and he had a friend called Terry Skiverton who was already on Dream Team and then Paul Linger when he retired, went to, when he, so he dropped out of pro football to play part time, he had gone to Dream Team. He had spoke to me and said, Dan, if you want to come and work here, it's wicked, come and join. Yeah. So he just opened the door for me and got me in at um, Dream Team. Are you saying it was fifty pound a day? Fifty pound a day. And what, what kind of were you talking on the camera at any point? Yeah, I talk to the camera sometimes, and it was a fifty pound a day. It was an extra, just so as we're an talking extra. what early two thousands, isn't yeah, it? Early two thousand, like ninety nine. It was ninety nine. Yeah. It was. Yeah, I remember this, this show, like, man. Nineteen ninety nine. Flicking, I was so addicted to it. Man. I got all my mates into it and they were like, what is this stuff you're yeah. watching, man? It was like, and then they brought out, was it Footballers Wives? Footballers Wives, that? yes. It came yeah. out after that, didn't it? That came out after, but so it didn't have the football film nah. because it was Dream, kind of based on Dream Team players going original. crazy, taking drugs and so forth. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is a nice little road to open up. I'm going to show you a little bit of power yeah. in this one, man. Wow, man. I'm flipping out. It's ridiculous. But look how smooth it is, right? It's ridiculous. And to be fair, it's such a nice road to do a bit of. So we're getting a little autopilot here, slow it down a little bit. Take it out to about 70, 75. And the car just doesn't think. That's this is what mad. I was supposed to be doing through the whole thing, but I forgot. <laughs> wow. So normally you just gotta like, touch the wheel a little bit here and there. But it's smart, man. Look, I can basically go like four car lengths, five car lengths yeah. behind, keep it safe. 
It's crazy, Changing yeah. lanes is this is the this is the future, isn't it? It is. They're saying that there's not going to be many cars on the road because, and you won't need a car. There'll be all these taxis like Tesla taxis. Well, this one's the first one that they've got a camera inside now. Yeah. Um, so if I yeah in the future when it's allowed, yeah, I'll be able to just let it do its thing. Exactly. Or come pick me up wherever it is. Yeah. Or well, they're saying that you'll go to work, you'll just order a taxi, and it will cost you like three pounds to get you twenty miles. So yes, mad. So there's going to be so much. There's going to be no traffic on the road because it's, everyone's just using autopilot cars to reduce everything. You don't need to own a car. There's another Tesla there, isn't it? Yeah. That's X. Yeah. That's nice as well. It is. They're lovely. Tommy's got one, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. So, all right, cool. So now you're, you're on... What is this guy doing? See the way he broke there? Yeah. That was crazy, isn't it? It's bad. That's I trust this thing to My car it. does the same with all... On, not, yeah. It's not auto driving, but on yeah. when you're on um, cruise control, mm. it will break automatically. So we'll be getting close and then pick up the speed that you set or went again. That, that was actually a good test for security. Anyway, mm. um, well, hopefully the, the audio can pick us up. But like, yeah. we're, we're now on Dream Team. Um, did you, where, I'm trying to guess, like, where, where did your kind of thought pattern of sports on screen or where you are right now, when did you start to think, you know what, I'm, I'm going to be big? Or did that ever, not, did that ever enter it, your it head? It never ever entered my head. What, what entered my head was building a business that would have longevity right that's what it was is how do you I'm gonna build a business that's gonna have longevity I love being in this industry now how do I stay in this industry how do I make stay relevant within this industry fundamentally you have to find your positioning yeah and now that was key and I think what 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 was key was the title what I got to realize within this industry is that a lot of people feel threatened and titles create threats yeah so I started by calling myself a sports choreographer yep I can direct but as a choreographer directors never feel threatened got you so they want you on their sets to work with them yeah so being a choreographer means nothing sometimes I get to set people go oh do you do dancing <laughs> so, so that told you the title's right because then directors always want you yeah if I'm called a football director you're taking something away from a director of course so the title was the first thing. So I thought, okay, this is what I'm going to call myself. Therefore, I'll be welcome on people's sets. That's a, that's a, that's a genius move, that is, man. It was it's the so best smooth. move. It was the best move I could yeah. have ever made. Yeah. Because I never wanted to feel like I was a threat to any director. I wanted directors to know I was help. Mm. I'm there to help you. It's your gig. Yeah. I'm only here to help you. So the title was a key thing. And when I got in the industry, I realized like, oh, there's a runner because it's all, everything's tiered. There's yeah, runners, yeah. there's a third AD, a second AD, a first AD, and then there's a director. And, and I realized, oh, there's a tier system. I'm coming into an industry with a tier system. What is my title going to be? Got you. So I had nothing to do with that tier system with a title as a choreographer, a sports choreographer. You're not even in that tier system, so you're not a threat. Yeah. You're never looking to climb above anybody. Yeah, yeah. But I was, remember I was saying to you how you are with people. It's good that you mentioned that, man, because I, I got a chance to learn all this stuff, right? Being on set. Mm-hmm. Runners, this, who's this, who's, yes. who's important? Who's the person to talk to when you need something quick? Yes. But you were so, the way you slotted in, like everyone was just like magnetically drawn to you, bro. It's sick. It's proper sick. And I, even when I talk about it now, it brings back good memories. Like yeah. I said, when I was in Barcelona, you made me feel like I was a professional footballer for a week, yeah? And that's something that I would live, like it would live in my mind forever because for days playing when I was a kid on the street, um, I was hoping to think I was a good player, but you, you never think you're gonna be able to play in a, we played in the, we, we filmed in the, what film uh, stadium was it? Deportivo, no, not Deportivo. No, it was Espanol, Espanol, yes. Espanol yeah? Which is a pre- an impressive stadium. It's a, it's a new stadium, I think. Yes. Um, but you know you had extras you had about a thousand extras there yeah and again that's more than anyone i've ever played in front of or done anything in front of and they were there to cheer and pretend they're, they're fans Mate, yeah we had the whole, I had the whole brazil kit on brand new brazil kit, awesome fresh night boots and you're on a full-size pitch best best grass in the world and brother i was like this guy's the man man like look at the setup you've got you brought yeah. your team from london to another country you're respected by all the directors like you said you know how to work yep. the tier system and it's a good point to make, man, because this podcast, bruv, right? Right, I called it Born to Fly. And people said to me, Rush, are you just going to talk about skipping? Are you going to... And I said, you know what, I want, obviously there will be people on of board course. talking yeah. about this sort of stuff. 
But I said, you know what, it's something more than this, man. Like, I want to get people on board in, who are just doing something so much more than anyone can imagine. And what you're doing, like you said, your, your work has been seen by billions. Yeah. I don't think anyone else can say that. No, it's crazy, but I appreciate the YouTube opportunity work. though, Rich, because I think what's fundamentally important and what you're doing in terms of this podcast is you're giving, in terms of this whole thing, you're giving other people the opportunity to learn and to get a chance to fly as well. So and this is about. what it's about. Let's pass it on, keep passing the baton on. This what so I mean, everybody man. actually gets a confidence within themselves to go, this is what I love, this is my passion, this is what I love doing. Do you know what? I'm going to give it a go. But I'm not giving it a go blind. I've listened to people who've gone through the experience. I've watched people who have been successful through it. Mm. I'm going to follow their pattern. You actually, it's about setting out a blueprint. That's using, it. you can't just copy somebody, but using people's experiences to try yourself. Yeah. And I think that's what you're doing is brilliant because it will inspire other people who watch this to go, I'm going to go and do that. I'm going to give it a go. This I'm passionate about art. I'm yeah. going to give it a go. This is what I mean. You've come from a, from a background where you're playing football. And how many stories do you hear where people were supposed to be footballers, didn't make it because of injury? So and many. They, and they went downhill. It just went wrong for them. They got into crazy stuff. Yeah. What you've done, I'm hoping if any footballers or anyone watching, because football is still my passion, bro. As much as obviously everyone knows I'm, I'm the guy yeah. that does skip it. That's the last five years of my life. And you've got to remember when I was born from like four to the moment I could stand till about 27 before I had my hip operation, yeah. I was playing every single yeah, day. Yeah, you loved your football. Yeah. And, and you still like, love I'm, it. I'm going to do a little lane change feature. Yeah. Actually, hold on. I'm going to show you a little lane change feature. I'm still getting used to it, by the way, so trust, trust the system. Yeah. <laughs> it's mad. It do you it. sure it's not going the other way? No, it doesn't want to do it. Well, that was good, didn't it? I'll try again. Normally, what happens you hit that. Yeah. And then it's saying this. Let's try. There we go. Wow. It's crazy, man. Maybe they like that lorry. Yeah. It's crazy, isn't it? That's sick. Yeah, anyway, man. yeah, so so coming back to the point, um, I'm hoping that people that would listen to this, the reason why I wanted you as the first guy as well, not like I said, like not only because you, you've got that aura, bro, and it's not very common that, I mean, I've met a, a number of people in my life, but even though I haven't met you so many times, mm -hmm. every time I meet you, I know that feeling, right, that energy that you have, and it's just like, I want to learn from this guy. And I could be around, I probably have been around big dogs. Even when I'm in the office and people are on like 200, 300K killing it when yeah. I used to be back in my old job. I never once looked at them and I was like, I want to be like you. It's not the money. You no. see, it's the impression that you leave on people. And like I said, that, that opportunity you gave me and sports on screen and the, like, that experience, bro, is just golden. Like when I talk to people, I don't want to talk to them and tell them, you know, this is my job title, this is how well I'm doing. I want to tell them, mate, I did a, I did a Nike advert, bro. I was on set, we made it look like a favela. Yes. And they had this this uh, hero, this this sportsman, and I met David Luiz, I've met yep. Alexis Sanchez for you, I've met yep. Giroud, I've met so many crazy players, and you make it happen, like, do you know what I mean? So, and I think that's what it is, is that you know them experiences, you know, when we, when we look back in life, you always look at the experiences. Exactly. And you can hold on to them and smile. You go, I did that. And I think fundamentally, that is what is important for us. It's so important. Trust me, man. My, my family, none of them understand football, right? Yeah. It's typical Indians, right? But that was one of the first times that when I told my dad what I was doing, and he was never into football, by the way. Yep. Yeah? So he's never into me. When I used to go play and he used to just be like, I oh, wasted your time, all that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah. Usual typical stories, which you don't need to get into. But when I did the advert, and then the advert, even when I was out there, but when the, he never understood it, but when the advert came out, yep. and I said to him, this is my bit, watch closely, yeah? And I showed him the pictures, I showed him all the kind of, Brilliant. what we did behind the scenes. The first thing he did is he forwarded it to everyone, this right? And I had never seen my dad do any kind of forwarding <laughs> or talk about my stuff, in terms of football anyway. Yes. As much, he'd, he'd only probably watched me twice in his whole life. Mad. And, and the first time he watched me was when I was 22, and it was a five-a-side game, and I, and I did pretty well in that game, to be fair. And then he came, when I walked off the pitch, he said to me, you know, what, did you ever, why did you never go to trials? I was like, bro, you can't tell me this now. <laughs> I was like, when I was about 10 years old, how am I going to get to trials? Yeah. Really? yeah. Like, I mean, I don't even know where to start. Yeah. Like, obviously now you've got Google and kids can go by of themselves course. and all that kind of stuff. But he was impressed. But when the football advert came out, and this is what I'm saying, those are the, it's not the, the sometimes the job promotions and no. stuff that live long in the memory. It's, it's that moment with my dad when he was like, He's like, look at what Rush does. You know, yeah. like, well, look what he did, man. He, love did, it. he did an eye cut, but he got all gassy, told everyone. This is what I love about the industry is that doing it is one experience and then you get to see the end product. 
Yeah. So you get two big experiences from it. Because you do it and you go through it all great, a few months later it comes out and you have a second experience, a second wave. Yeah. Which is a beautiful thing that you can share with everybody. Sick man. And it's such a good thing. And, I, and when, when I hear that from you, you just go, this is what it's about. Trust me. This man. is what it's about. Yes, you get paid and everything, but it's that experience. And I always say to people, it's the closest thing you can get to being a professional footballer. It's the no, closest exactly, thing. Exactly, man. That was a great experience, man. Honestly. And not only, obviously, it's, it's everything aside of it, right? You get yeah. to meet good people. Let's come off on the left ear, then we can do a loop. You meet, um, you meet good people. Yeah. You meet, um, I'm going to take control here. You meet good people, the other models are all cool, your staff, your, everyone that you meet on set. Yeah. And everyone's adding each other on social, all this kind of stuff. Like you're, so you're building networks for people. And that's and what it is about, Connections really. and friends. You, do not, you, and you, you probably do realise it, but I would say that there's so much more to what you do on a day-to-day -day basis than, mm -hmm. you, than you may even realise, man. No, I, I, I'm aware of a lot of things. And, but what I try and do is make sure that I take everything in my stride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that you're never overawed or feel too much of a responsibility. Of course. And so my thing has always been about, because I was always that kid who needed help. Right. So fundamentally, that that's in my DNA is, is that I now need to be able to give ever, other people help. That's it. Because all I ever wanted, Rush, growing up was, can someone just give me a chance? Gotcha. Just give me a chance. I came from a broken home. Mm -hmm. We had nothing. I was on free school dinners, free, free, like I grants for my school uniform, everything. Right. But I knew that whatever, you give me an opportunity, I'm going to grab it. But it was someone to who was going to give me an opportunity. That's, that's what it's that's, always been about. That's respect, man. You're, you do so much things for your communities and stuff like that as well, isn't it? You know, you're now involved with SC Dons. Yeah, we haven't yeah. touched on that, man. Yeah. SC Dons. I'm sure someone watching this will know about SC Dons. That's what. That's They're a passion up. project, man. I love it, and I'm a chairman of the football club. And dig up to them, man. Telling you what the boys have done. We're going to come off here. What the boys have done. I, I'm just. Uh, I'm just helping them achieve yeah. their goals. Yeah, yeah. We're at phase two with SE Dons and I mean, we've got a fan base, a global fan base. It's We're getting millions, following, isn't it? yeah, it's millions so and millions and millions and millions of views. We're going around, yeah. Yeah, we're going around. Brands are, want, all the brands wanting to work with us. Even the FA, the England team, we've gone on, they've, they called, can you guys come and do a video That's with crazy. us? We've sent George to St. George's Park to work with um, Jordan Pickford to create YouTube videos. It's He's, crazy. The, the, so George has been on Soccer AM, everything. Soccer AM, like. everything. And what it is, is a bunch of kids from South East London who loved football and were passionate. I mean, Don Strapsy and Ryan Palmer started it. And when you look at Don Strapsy, he's one of our models. He was. Okay. And Ryan Palmer was one of our models. Ryan starred in a load of Nike 5 adverts and everything like that. And your, your son's, your son's And my son them, plays yeah. for them. But it's passionate boys telling the truth. So what you're seeing is real passion for football. The on personalities camera. are in, like the way you get the personalities yeah. are, and that's phenomenal. And it's the, you realize it's more than anything, but it's, I realize now it's just the story is what is that's golden. If you don't have a story, then you've got nothing really. Nothing. If, if you show the stories, the personalities, the, yeah. the work behind the scenes, um, you can make anything come to life, man. Anything can come to life, and, and what it is now, it's structure. So we structured. SE Dons as a business. Yeah. Because we, the boys are working four of them full time on there. Gotcha. You've got Don Strapsy, you've got George, you've got Chris, you've got Mitch. They're, they're, they're all right. working full time on this. It's a full time project and yeah. they give their all towards it. So my thing was, I'm not coming in to take over the business, I'm coming in to, I've come in to structure the business so they get the rewards mm -hmm. for what they're doing. Because that's the job. So when you do a job, you need to get paid. So I had to structure the business so as they can get paid and they can carry on growing the entity. Mate, so you've got sports on screen, you've got that passion project, you've got, you got what else you got going on? So it, it's crazy. So obviously, on, yeah, we, I'm, inv <laughs> I'm involved with so many different businesses. <laughs> Go down to hair products, you name no, it. Really? Yeah. So I'm Go involved on. with another business called A Fuller Beard, which does all beard products and everything say your like beard that. Is always on so we've got <laughs> involved in a lot of different businesses. But my thing is, my involvement is, yeah, I, they, I, they, I become a shareholder, but it's to give the experience and guidance to people. Yeah. That's what I love doing because I want to see everyone win. Because the thing is, I always say to people, this is your chance to win. Let's get you a win. Yeah. And if I can give my time up for anybody, and, and and they can get a win, I will do it. 
I will do it, and that's Respect fundamental. That. I mean, that. even this morning, I got a call from a friend of mine called Warren Wall, and he's working with the Wall of Comedy. They're going to start a football team to do Sunday football. Okay. And he was like, "And we need some help. I need a ground." I said, "I know a guy with a ground. Let me call him, and I'll come back to you later today." So your your kick is always that, isn't it? It's whatever you're, whatever you're involved in, there's got to be. You, you want to put back value. in, yeah. You want to create yeah. value for people. And mm-hmm. I talk to footballers. I'm like, don't make a mistake. Call me. It costs you nothing to call me. I'll help you. I'll give you some advice. Yeah. Because it costs you nothing before you go and involve yourself in something that's going to send you down the wrong path and cost you fortunes. And sometimes it's when it's not always money. Sometimes it's time. I still talk to people who come up with ideas. I'm, I want to do this. I'm like, okay, let's break this down. Bam, bam, bam. I said, save yourself a year of your time doing yeah. that. When it won't succeed, mm-hmm. go down this route. Yeah, and that's a phone call. It's cost them instead of costing them all their life savings. Got you. What's what's the what's the plans for sports on screen? Because I'm I know more about sports on screen than Bessie does yeah. and all the other little things you just mentioned. But like sports on screen, like is that still your? It is my baby. baby yeah? It's my baby. Yeah, yeah. But what what we do now, we've grown different entities out of sports on screen, and we're now working closely with the likes of Ian Wright and people like that, and we've got formats show formats yeah and so we're working on show formats to come out next year and things like that so we're looking to really bring out a lot of new stuff that people can sort of hang their coat on and working with different footballers different sportsmen we're now working with the nba and company and place things like that so it's really really good because we've got to put we'll put that on camera guys and whoever's listening you you're not just football no you're you're literally you've done tennis adverts you've done Basketball, basketball, American football, yeah, yeah. ice hockey, athletic, you name it, we've done it. We've worked with You've like been to LeBron so many James. Sick countries as well, right? To shoot these. Yeah, the good thing about that's what I always say, people are like, how's lockdown <laughs> been? You travelled so well, man. And I say lockdown's been good because I can get on minimum sort of twelve flights a month. So lockdown's been good not having to fly. Just had your time just to just to chill. Recoup. Recoup, re- recharge, and yeah. build, and build as well. So get your head down and start building things, new things, new entities. That's a crazy thing, man. Like you, you've literally tra- to all the countries I can probably think of at the top of my head. That you've probably been to. I've been to so many; it's ridiculous. The air miles are good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hotels, decent hotels, good hotels, good, good set up, good food on set usually. Yeah, it's been. It's been, listen. We're blessed the way things work within the industry. Yeah, but. I still will say to anyone, there's no place like home. Got you. There is no place Got like you. home. I still love that pl- flight coming home and that journey from the airport to home yeah. is the best part of the journey. Respect. It always Major is the best respect. part of the journey. I mean, I've got, to, I've got to admit that's how I kind of felt. I was, I was out of the country for a while, wasn't it? When I was in South America. Yes. And um, although I was a bit disappointed to leave, like when I did come home, you just think, South. I mean, I've been in South London nearly all my life. I yep. born in Luton, actually, but yeah, South London, man. I just don't know if I'm ever going to leave. <laughs> I'm in the same place, the same road, everything. You gotta come down to the HQ, man. You know I've been telling you this for so yeah, long. Yeah, where is the HQ? It's down in, in about half an hour away from you, man. Is that all? Forty-five minutes. Near Croydon, isn't it? 40. Oh, I never realised. That's easy I'm on to the get road from to. West Dormsey, bro. Oh, perfect. That's, that's, that's easy. my to claim, bro. Claim so, yeah, claim, I, I bro. didn't realise you were just there. Yeah, yeah, I'm just there, man. Some. Yeah, no breeze, for an easy yeah, that area. That's right? easy to get to. I, do you know why? Because I come up to Sellers, there's, I go to take this jerk, yeah, jerk sellers, place yeah. at Sellers, right by the ground. That's where I go on my jerk, that's where I go and get my jerk. No, right where it, Sainsbury's is. Yeah, yeah, so you Sainsbury's. go around that little... Yeah, yeah, just yeah. there, I get my jerk there. Oh, you're kidding me, man. My jerk, chicken and rice and peas, it's a regular form. I see my hair cut from across the road there. You need to um, give me a shout if you're free, man. Yeah, man, definitely. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just getting the place done up now, so it's going to be a lot neater. Brilliant. But this is good. Let me actually. Talk that one a little bit higher, please. I want to get your hat in there, man. That looks cool. You might have to unscrew a little oh, bit of yeah. like, that little middle screw. I can just put this yeah. here. So where's your tilt from here? Yeah, yeah. So let's go there. Yeah, However me. you want it, man. There's good. That'd be a nice shot. There's a good shot. There we go. We've got a little higher shot so you get Andy's hat in there. It looks cool. The happy days. <laughs> what were we saying? Um, skipping. So tell me about your skipping journey, man. You, you know, know what? what? By the way, I just had, I just had um, deja vu, man. Do you know what deja vu means for me? Yeah. Well, it means your life's on the right path. Oh really? Yeah, that's wicked. wicked. Love that. I literally just had deja vu with me asking you how your skipping journey's yeah, going, and we're sitting in the car. That is sick. It's great, but you know, <laughs> it's because of you. I was like, let me. I'm gonna start skipping, and I just thought, let me get into it because I got the rope, ordered the ropes, everything, and I just love it. You know what? It just gives you a freedom. You just you just got into it, and then now yeah. I see you skipping, and you're pulling out some moves. And then now the amount of people on my channel that 
are like, and how, where do I get the rope? Where oh, do I get the gangster, man. Where do I get that? And I just always watch their flicks. And everyone, you, I've bro. got producers, exec producers, no way. all skipping. All of them are skipping. Bro. It's unbelievable. Thank you, man. you know my dream, right? I don't know if I told you this when I first spoke to you about the idea, was I wanted to get this more into football. Yes. Because I feel like this would help a lot of football. Well, we're on camera. We've got to do an SE Don's pre season skipping. Yes. Oh, that's the jokes, bro. Let's do it. You know, I've got, I've got a video of George doing skipping. There you go. So, you that? because well, I went on set, I was on set and he was there the first time I met him. Yeah. And I was introducing the skipping to some of the boys. And he was like, oh, give me a go, man. Give me a go. I've actually, I'm going to find it on camera. Big so when, G. I, when I meet him, I was chatting to him on DM. So, we recently. need to do it soon then because we're in pre season mode. So, it'd be good for you to come down we'll do it, man. and do a skipping and we'll session. And we'll get some of the content guys. and uh, yeah. see, see uh, who's got some skills. Yeah. But what, what, do you, what, do you, um, what do you think is helped you with the skipping as in like what was how's your body changed and stuff no i think just i think for me it's mobility yeah it's my mobility is great because and hand hand and coordination because you're never really doing that much what you do naturally with your hands are different but to have your whole body in sync yeah is unbelievable it's quite tough isn't it and and the sweat and the sweat the trade it looks it looks easy but it isn't and only when you give someone else a rope and they are i'll have a go and you're like, oh, they can't skip. There's no coordination. And you realize how out of sync their bodies are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, and it gets you a good sweat. A good, good Proper sweat. sweat. Yeah. Proper sweat. You, um, you saw someone in your gym and it using our stuff, man. That was amazing. I remember I was in the gym and the guy had, um, he had the t-shirt on and the ropes. And I was like, oh, I see you using the Russia flakes. He said, yeah, the best stuff ever. I said, yeah, he's my friend, you know. And then I went to my gym bag and pulled out oh, my rope. That's a sick thing. And he went, oh my God. He said, yeah, and he stuff wicked. And you know how that makes me feel? It makes me feel so proud. I'm like, look at this. Thanks, man. And even and the amount of people I showed them, the Floyd Mayweather's the, using your rope. Yeah, yeah, that was I just, big. I shared it with so many people. That was, so many people. That was big, Because man. what you've done is phenomenal. It really is. Thank you, man. It's phenomenal, man. It's amazing Thank because you. not only have you achieved something, but you've done it and you're giving people quality, quality products. Yeah. Quality products. Yeah. You're saying, look, learn this, but if you use this, this will help you because it's quality. It will give it's you the thing, it will, man. It's longevity you know and quality. Three years ago, people just thought skipping rope was a skipping rope. And I said, you know what? It's not, man. Like, like anything. Like when you buy trainers. Yes. Why is, why is a night trainer going to be yep. different to like a Primark trainer? The thing is with vinyl, you notice if you buy something from like let's say Lonsdale Sports Direct, it's gonna yeah. be different to my vinyl. So um, yeah, we just we just try and give people the tools, man. And for me, it was, it's good to see guys like you doing yeah. this. But it's you're like, giving us tutorials at the same time. Thank you, man. Not not just saying because you're an older man, but like I'm just saying that like, it's good because it shows that anyone can do this at any time in their well, life. Well, that's why I put it out there because I say to people, look, I'm 51 now. And I'm still, I'm 51. Oh, shut up. I thought you was in your 40s. No, man. I'm 51. And I show people, look, this is what I do. And people are like, how do you stay so trim? And I share what I do. Yeah. I don't, it's not a, like a secret just for me. I want people to live long. Yeah. So I, I beat people go, well, I share what I do because then you don't have to ask the question. You can see it. You train if I'm hard, training right? with my missus, I, I like the, I'll put up with my missus training. But it's about sharing what you do so everybody benefits. 100. And, and I think that's super important because I have no special thing, I just train, I do my training, but what I am is a routine person. So I know that I'm going to do this in the morning, this this is what I'm going to do, and I'll make sure, even if I'm away shooting, I still maintain You're always my, training my, when you're shooting, isn't I it? I always I train. remember that. I maintain you know, this my is routine. Funny. It's a funny story. Um, when I, before I met you, I remember actually, I was talking to, to Joel, uh, big up to Joel. Yeah. Joel Ledges, 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 Ledges. Yeah. yeah. He um he was he came to Barcelona with me and he was actually the guy that was like kind of like helping me keep chill right because yeah. I was like how many have you done these before he's like oh, yeah I've done a few I was like oh, this is my first time I was all excited yeah yeah and uh, he was like okay you're gonna meet Andy for the first time and I was like yeah man I'm meeting first time I was just excited right yeah and he was like yeah I, I guarantee you I know exactly what he's done already by the time he gets on set he's woken up he's done his workout and he's gonna be there on time. He's gonna, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And literally to a T, you turned up, and you're like, yes, boys, done my workout. And it was like, it was six in the morning, bro. <laughs> yep, yep. We were all just like struggling to get out of bed. Yeah, and man. I remember, I was like, this guy is sick, man. <laughs> I, I just think it's one of those, and I, I've, since retiring from football, I've always maintained the regime. You're proof, you're, you're proof in the pudding, man, that you gotta keep yourself healthy, man. It's important because you can have all the good ideas, and but you without a healthy body, you cannot execute anything. Yeah. 
and it all works. The mind and the body works hand in hand. They work together. I can't believe you're 51, man. 51. Yep. Honestly, I'm mad. mad but I don't feel it, Rashid. I still feel young. I'm still able to do everything, which yeah. is great. And and there, yeah, it's an it's a number, but it's how the body feels, and the body the body is full of life. Of My flexibility is better than it was when I was a professional footballer, because I've worked at it. That's insane. Listen, getting back to our point, we need to do that pre-season. Yes. And um, and I want you, as well, for, for my listeners who are really into my skipping, they will be really happy if you could try and push this onto your, your co-workers, your staff, yeah. like you're already doing. And if you do see a little uh, moment with a professional footballer, just to say to them, try a bit of skipping, and that would yep. be nice, man. If they see more and more videos of these kind of people doing it, Definitely. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be good. But man. I've looked at your audience growing and the amount of people that have taken up skipping just through oh, bro, watching it's it. nuts, man. It's unreal. It's nuts. It's and unreal. if you watch some of the, the way that they, how they skip, yes. a lot of them are a lot better than me, right, by the way. But it's, there's a style around the world now that people have never seen. Yes. And that's what I love because skipping's been around for, for years, bro. Maybe centuries, right? I don't know. But uh, now people are only in that style. It's, it's fashionable, and, but yeah. there's swag to it. I'm there's watching swag. people do, and I'm like, look at the swag. My son's girlfriend, Frankie. Yeah. You want to see her swag when she skips? She's sick, yeah. What? I was like, wait, hold serious? on. Serious? What's, what's her surname? Frank, what's Frankie's Is it surname? Forrester? Yes, Frankie Forrester. That's it. Yeah. Oh. That's, my, that's it, Frankie Forrester. That's yes. my son's girlfriend. She's yeah. a proper supporter, bro. Trust me. She's yes. really nice, man. Yeah, man. Oh, big up to Frankie. And she's then, watching, man. And then call she's, me she's, Taps she's, is another one who worked for us. Call me, call, his name's um, TCM. I think I met him. I met Taps. Him. And now he's been on a journey, so oh. he's lost something like eight stone Jeez. in the last two years. Got now, you. if you see him skip, phenomenal. Then oh. m- one of my best friends, Chris Newman, another great, great course, friend Chris, of mine. Yeah, of when you see Chris, because Chris used Chris to box when he was he, younger. He was always good at skipping. Yeah, so when he skips, he's phenomenal. He's light on his feet for big guy. Light on his feet, but he loves it. And when I was skipping, it inspired him to go back to skipping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't believe it's such a small world because I remember Frankie must have messaged me or something. Yes. And she's a really kind, sweet girl. She's like, listen, I love your stuff. And yeah, she's supporting, man. Big supporter. Big supporter. Oh, mate. We're Every gonna... morning she does her skipping. Listen, Every morning. If she's listening or watching, man, drop drop me a line or we'll send you some stuff, man. She's we'll always get, on we'll it. We'll get you some stuff to, to, to rep as well. Oh, that's cool, man. But I this think I when love, you bro. look at it's a community has been built. Yeah. But it's been built, built how you just mentioned because you just see you've done a video or two. That's right. And people are like, yo, this looks cool. Yeah. And then they're like, what's all this about? And then you tell them, you share yeah. it. And it's that's what I love most, man. I did a video recently talking about athletes, right? A lot of people want to get on board and become an athlete. For yeah. Me. And I was saying to him, I was like, listen, like, for me, it's not the money. I can make everyone an athlete and just say, here you go, here's a 10% code, spread it. Exactly. And, and, and that would be me looking for the money, for brand yeah. presence. And I was like, look, I want to build a close knit team, a community who. And value. And value. Like, you just, you just do it, you share it with your friends, you just exactly. enjoy doing it. And, and that's the thing with me is that I say to people, I put my videos up in a chair and, I, and then they were like, then they say to me, where did you get your rope from? I say, this is where I bought my ropes from. Yeah, yeah. Don't force it on nobody, but exactly. I say, I like it because it gives me this quality and this, 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 and this. And then it's for them to make their minds up. They'll go on the website, they look at it and they go, do you know what, I'm going to go down this road. And that's what they realise. Because in order to skip to a certain level, you need the right tools. Definitely. It's fundamental. Definitely. It's so, so, so important. And everyone I know has, who has bought your stuff always says, no, nah, the rope's wicked. Thank and you, not man. only that, they keep it up. They don't just buy, you know, you can buy fitness equipment just for the sake of buying, use it once and you put it there and it gets, gathers dust. Yeah, yeah. People purchase a rope and they use it. They, they use it. They it use gives, because it. it it's so good, it inspires them to keep going. It's not one of those things that's going to wear out. It inspires you because it's smooth. You want to keep going. And then like the mat, the mat for me, I use the mat for sit-ups, everything. Oh, you get the big one, yeah? Yeah, the big mat. I oh, skip on yeah. it as well as using big it for all my sit-ups, that. press-ups, everything. I, it's more, more, I use it for so many things. Yeah, gee, man. And you, and you support it right, man. Like, do you know what, bruv? Like, that's, it's really weird to say it because when, only when I speak to you now, I just kind of remember, right? But, I never knew nothing about cameras. I did a bit of media studies in college. Mm-hmm. But when, so when I worked with you guys, that was the first exposure I got to cameras. Crazy, huh? So I got to say, man, I got big respect because like, a lot of my experience on what I do with the camera yeah. is literally on what I learned from being on sets with Mad. Mike and uh, Luke Cazade or whoever, Gatorade even. Yeah. I can't remember who I worked for, but I did a few, right? And like, yeah, big respect, man, because those are the small things you don't even realize. Like when I'm sitting there with my videographer sometimes, yep. and big up to him, he'll be editing this later on. Wicked. But, um, 
I learned so much from you, man. But this like, is what's experience. great about it, Rush, is that we all, everyone's, when you can share what you know, and you can share your teachings with others, so they can share that with others. Yeah. That's growth as have an you, individual. Have you, have you ever felt or ever got burnt by doing it too much? You do, you do, but that's part of life, it's part of the journey. But what I think super important is that you've then got to maintain who you are. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You're you're always gonna be like that. I mean, you've had incidents where I've called you. You called me, and that's why I called you. And that was, that was. I'm not gonna say surprising. That's not the right word. But I was like shocked in a weird way because that was big for me. You know when you yeah. did it, when you made that call for me, that's what I was like, yo. Again, it's one of those things because it's you. I'm just like, I've got to, I've got to listen. Because it's fu- I know because the frustrations you'll go through. So I'm like, that was okay, helpful, this is way. what happens. That was super helpful. This is what way. happens because it is frustrating, and and all it was is I saw the interaction. So yeah. before I called you, I did my homework. This is our ground. This is SC Don's oh, ground. Look could... at the sign, see? That looks sick. New home of SC Don's, that's our ground. Yeah. Build in the future, man. Yeah, like man. So when I, when I, when I saw, I, what I did is, I, would, I, went, I thought, let me, okay, I saw something and I thought, mm-hmm. let me go through the backstory. You saw me getting irate. Yeah, and I read the backstory <laughs> and I called you, I said, Rush, don't get irate. Yeah. This is what you've got to do, because you're giving that person the time to do this, this and this. Uh-huh. You've got to just take it back a bit and do it. Because I know you've worked so hard to create something and then someone just comes and wants to steal from you. Mm-hmm. And it's a horrible thing. But one thing you've got, like I said to you, you've got to realize, you are the original. Right. Like you can, when there's a Rembrandt painting, look how many copies there are of Rembrandt. Yeah. They're not yeah. valued as much as Rembrandt. That's the easiest way to look at it. Your value will, not, will never be taken away from you because you are that guy. That was massive for me when you when you phoned me that next couple of days when it was happening. Yeah, that week was pretty difficult for us because we knew the guy. That, I think that's what made it a bit more annoying because what's happened since him is there's been loads of people doing it. Well, now, I yeah. rang you and, the other day. Remember, I sent you I sent you a message like I saw something. I was it like, was you? Yeah, Rush, yeah, yeah. what is this? <laughs> What, why are you on, is this some, a new product of yours? Yeah, I yeah, asked you, yeah, yeah, and you yeah. said, no, no, it's not. People have been using my thing. I'm like, well. So this is what I'm saying, so that has now kicked on. And I think people have just thought it's fine to do it now because the, the, the demand for skipping ropes and skipping, yeah. ha- obviously people are doing their maths or their algorithms in the background and doing their analysis. Yeah. It's something that's probably hot right now, yeah? Of course. And, and that's thanks to, again, my community who do this, like watch these type of yeah. videos, right? And post their videos, but people try and take the shortcuts then they think, okay, I can't skip, but I want to sell this product. Let me go online. Let me gra- let me just find someone doing skipping. Yeah, yeah. They come across my thing, and they probably don't know nothing about me. But they've got so much good content of content, you skipping. They, just, they pull it off, and then they use it. And then they try and cut your head off or yeah. whatever. But I know your body. I know your product. I know your clothing. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. as soon as I see your legs or a certain technique, I'm they like, that's rushing. The time. But it's the thing. That's why the first guy was the one that hit me, because only because I, he was within the community. Yeah, he was he part was of your party. Chit-chatting. And, yeah, yeah, he was the one messaging, how do you do this? bro a lot of the time that's how it happens and that's why i was like you sick (laughs) yeah you little bit but yeah that was that was a massive call for me man because after that i was like you know what you're right man like i haven't got time to to to, to, like waste time and if you're not the best if people aren't looking over at your at you Mm. you're not doing it right exactly if you think of the haters if you think you're people trying to copy you then what then you're not doing doing it right right. you're not doing it well you're not leading because they don't forget they follow they're copying leaders and that's what you are, you're a leader. And so they're always gonna to wanna to copy you. If they're not wanting to copy you, you're like, well, I can't be doing much work. I can't be doing much. I think that's mega advice, man. Like since your brand's come out with sports and screen and stuff, then you must have created a massive market for this stuff. Huge, huge market, huge market. Same sort of thing, right? Like Same sort of thing. So many people like, actually, I can do it and I can yeah. undercut him or I can, yeah, that's how what can happens. I get his contacts and. That's what happens. But what you, what you have to hold on to is who you are, your own identity and what you deliver. That's what you have to really hold on to. Well, this is who I am, and this is what we deliver. And it's a unique, because that is a unique service. What you do, when, I, when, you, when people watch you on camera, it's a unique experience. Got you. And it's a learning experience. I watch you, I don't, I've never watched, I tell you, I'm lying to you. I, the only person I ever watched was that first guy, mm. because I wanted to get through the backstory. Yeah, Other than that, know. I do not click on any other skipping tutorials. I don't. You're sick. I have Thank no you. need to. I've never clicked on another skipping tutorial. That thing came up on my video, mm. on my on my Instagram. I was like, what's this? I said, that's Russia. I said, is this a Russian new... I got a message. Russia's got some new... I messaged like, have you got dodgy, a new rope coming dodgy out? dodgy looking rope. And you're like, no, that, that's what I'm saying. Because I, I know you. That's yeah. the only time I'm going to watch something if you're on it. Because as far as I'm concerned, this is my teacher. This is what I'm going to watch. Major respect, man. 
It's crazy, a crazy world out there, man. It is a I crazy think, world. And the thing is, you, by you and myself, I guess to a certain extent, like getting people copying, we, we have to obviously see the sort of positives out of it. And yeah, see, and, and we have to basically just like bite our tongue a little bit if someone has gone over the line sort of thing and just be like, you know what? It's a good thing, really. People are looking to emulate you. Yeah. People are looking to copy your, your model and you may, they may do it the wrong way, but... I but mean, you touched on it. something earlier on, like you said, people will take the shortcut. Yeah. Well, you have to remember that the work you've put in, not many people are prepared to put that work in. Because no. that's why they already start with you a said shortcut. You on the phone call as well, That's it? why they start with that shortcut. They're not going to have that longevity. Because you know what? You'll outwork everybody. Because this, it's that, in your DNA. That is a sick line, because I always love saying that as well. It's like, you know what? I think what happened last year with this dude... Since that year, mate, I mean, I can't even go into numbers with you right now, but I be, I went mental with how yep. I was pushing things. Like, not just content, but like, I'm looking at trainers now. I've got new yeah. levels on mats. I've got, it spurred me in a weird way. Exactly. And I'm thinking, if that didn't happen, would I have got complacent? Probably not, I'm just saying. But that was a moment when I was like, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to an unstoppable yep. level now. Well, this is the one thing. You can copy all you want, but you can't take me. And you can't take what's in here. Yeah. That's the difference. And you know your work ethic because it's you. You believe in something. And a lot of people who are just, I'm just going to jump in, they can't, they turn to sleep, they go to bed. Yeah. It's like, no, dude, for, for, if you know yourself and like for me, sleeping, there's plenty of sleep when you pass away. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm on it. I'm, what I've got to do, I'm going to do. I remember at one stage when I was running the whole business by myself. I was working right through the night shooting, right through the night shooting. It was crazy. I remember going abroad and having to do two rehearsals for two different brands in the same day in Barcelona. So I bought two sets of clothing, Mad. rehearsed with one brand, then got a, got a taxi, <laughs> changed my clothing in the taxi to do with another brand. Luckily, the shoot days were separate days. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was crazy. That, but I know that you're not gonna, nobody can match that work ethic because it's you. This is something that you've created. That's mad. Crazy when people do stuff like that though, isn't it? The yeah. Human, the humans are crazy. Like look at what's going on right now, man. Just, just yeah, madness. It's a mad world, but we yeah. live in, that's the world we live in. What do we say to it? It's the world we live in. Are you, are you, um, you looking to get into something different? Outside of football, completely. You mentioned beards and stuff, but like, have you, yeah. got, have you got ideas that you're? I've got. To I've, share? I've, my, no, my thing is, uh, like, my next step will be. I'm, I'm working with someone at the moment is to get a fund together. Let's do a left here. Yeah. Get a fund together to help young people create new businesses. Oh, that's brilliant. That's what I want to do. And because of my core skill is in sport, is people that have got ideas, creative ideas within sport. Okay. So I'm working with someone putting a fund together so that we can get. It's a show format. Similar to like a Dragon's Den, but to do with oh, sports. Oh, nice. So people who have got creative, like got ideas of things and they want to bring it to fruition can come to the table and there'll be a pot of money there. That's wicked, man. That's what I want to do. That sounds like a very good idea, actually, man. Hopefully no one will be listening and take that idea. you got that one. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's there. It's there. We've, got, we've got some in <laughs> lockdown and you, in order to do it properly, it takes quite a bit of yeah, work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, respect to that. Yeah, you need to get back on TV, man. You're very good on TV, to be fair. Yeah, listen, I'm looking forward to it. I've had some good shows. Wayne Rooney Street Wait, Striker. Yeah. I was talking to my friend about that. Because yeah. like, Andy so that sounds familiar. They actually knew you from your son, funny enough. You're around. Yeah, it's mad. So he, they're going to be like, I know Zach and so I was yeah. like, that's his dad, bro. They're like, no way. <laughs> like, go straight, yeah. go straight. And I was like, I'm going to tell him that, actually. Yeah. Like, you reminded me. Yeah, so and then Ronaldo tested to the limit, shows like that. Yeah, yeah. Which was wicked, phenomenal. We're looking at, we're in talks again about doing another one of those, which that would be wicked. great. That's where they turned all the lights off, that one. That's right, that's right. That was the, what, cast oil one? Yeah, cast that's oil. 10 years ago. So imagine doing it now, Jeez. 10 years on, and he's still playing at the highest level. And he's still a gangster. Yeah, and he's playing at the highest level. So imagine what his body's doing now. Who, who's your kind of, in the, in the industry, I don't know if you're able to say, like, who's your kind of closest pal that, that most people would know? I would say, it, it's a hard one, but I would say who I've been the closest with and had that, the relationship was just mad sick. In terms of working relationship, yeah, would be Wayne Rooney. Oh, gangster, yeah. <laughs> He's supposed to be a proper joker. Isn't he? Man, listen, I can't even go into the fun we've had yeah. together on set. Man, he, he's just unreal. He's just the boy next door. That's what everyone says. The boy next door. And let me tell you something. Yeah, he's had a hard time. People give him, but he is the boy next door. I mean, if I was in Manchester when he was playing there, if I if I said to Wes, Wes, I've got a game with the people in the hotel. He'd turn up and play. Yeah. That's what he's like. 
he's the he's the original kind of they made a movie about the kid who grew up yeah. and was on the street. That's just him, isn't That's it? That's him, man. Wazza is unreal. He's the nuts. I love you. I have to yeah. smile when I mention his yeah, name. Yeah, yeah, I have to smile when I mention his name. Let's do a left up here. Cool. I, when I mention his name, I have to he smile. He some good memories, yeah? Man, great memories. When we were doing Wayne Rooney Street Striker, we had so much fun. It's just, so it's, much It's really fun. weird with him because he kind of comes across as a bit shy yeah. on camera. Yeah. Like when he's talking at interviews and stuff, That's it just right. seems like he's... Because he's not all about that. He's like, yeah. I just play football. Wayne just wants to enjoy scenes, playing football. To be proper jokes. Man, he is one of the funniest guys Peter ever. Peter Crouch said on his podcast. I, yeah. I was hearing, listening to that a little bit and he was like, Wayne Rooney, some of the pranks and hotel room antics. And <laughs> and Wazza, he's got so much energy, he don't sleep. That's yeah, the thing. That's he he don't sleep. That's what he said. Man, that guy does not sleep. He don't sleep. He's got so much energy. But he's competitive, right, Rush? Yeah. So when we do Street Striker, we used to, I used to mess around sometimes. So say me and him had a little competition okay, in rehearsals. So I'd be like, all right, see so you can hit that sign. <laughs> I'd strike the ball and I'd act like he hit it and he'd be like no I didn't, no, I didn't. I'd, but I knew to wind him up straight yeah. away I'd go yeah that was that hit it and he'd go crazy because he, he he's a winner yeah. he wants to win at everything but I used to just wind him up all the time and his agent used to be laughing guys to just wind him up but he's honestly he is phenomenal one of the funniest guys ever we used to do things like um I, I've got to say this is a funny one. Like, so when contestants would come up, so basically I would have rehearsed ages in the show. Yeah. So when the show is live and we're filming, say a contestant done something, so and then they'll be waiting at the end, and then I'll go, so and so come up and we talk to them. Yeah. So while they're at the end, me and Wayne will be talking. I say, done that right, that right, that right, that right. That was good. And when they'll come and then we'll talk about it. Yeah. So if we were unsure, right, Rish, what I would do? So the keys of that time when they're gone, yeah. I'd go. Wayne would go, what do you reckon? And I'd say, listen, this is all down to you. And I'd call it, and I'd go, so and so, come and join us. And he'd be like, <laughs> and I'd just stand there, right? And then Wayne would be like, um, yeah, 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 no, no. And Wayne go, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna let you go. And then I'd do it. I put my arm around the kid and walk away. And say, I can't believe they feels me, I'd have kept you in. <laughs> and leave Wayne stood there. <laughs> Why is it we can turn around up here? Why is it we get them raving up? He would just spin around here. He'd get the proper up. He'd be like, you're out of all the ants. How are you doing that? i said, say, what's that thing I want to do? But I'd be walking with the kid and say, yeah, if it was me, yeah. I would have kept you in. It was hilarious. Honestly, it was hilarious, man. Oh no, is the battery dead? It might be actually. Yeah, it might be. It's quite a long one actually. Yeah. But cool, we can wrap it soon. Wicked. We can wrap it, but um, We'll go down and do a right of the lights to go to mine. Yeah, that's In fact, sad. you can do this right here. We'll have, we'll have this camera. Well, this one's going down. Yeah. I'll tell you what, let me put a new battery in that one and we'll wrap yeah, it yeah. properly. It's all right. How do you like this format? Yeah, I like it, man. Like it's it, nice yeah. and easy because it's casual. You want to be a casual when you're chatting to people. It's nice, man, because, I mean, I've been, I've been dreaming this little thing up for, for a while, bruv, the podcast. And yeah, the car. man. Like the, the podcast couldn't happen until the car happened. Yeah, you, you need it, they need to, to work hand in hand. Yeah, so I was like, a year ago, I was like, oh, I want to do a podcast, but I, I want to do it in a car. Wicked. I don't want to do it in a studio. And I need the car to, res, like... To be reflecting, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it needs to be something mad. But Wicked. even though I'm not a car guy, it can't be like a Lambo. I mean, yeah, I, I yeah, can't yeah. afford a Lambo anyway, but it needs to be a car that's... Yeah, it's something different. This is wicked, though, man. It's nice, though. With the white seats, it kind of just it it's pops. It's it pops, here, you know? yeah. It pops, without a doubt. Um, We're going to do the left coming up. Sweet, man. Listen, it's good getting some stories, man. Yeah, man. It's, it's good to talk. You're a legend, bruv. You're a legend in uh, everyone's respect. eyes, I'm sure, man, who's met you. Respect and to that's the what's, max. That's what's crazy, because uh, you probably come into contact with so many people around the world. It is, Different mad. personalities, yeah. different... Religions, languages. but I love it because you learn, you learn new other people's traits and and how they live their life, and I like to be a sponge, you know. Yeah, you pick up the Spanish and that. Your Spanish yeah. is pretty decent, isn't it? Yeah, man. But I just like, I just, I love, but I just like because when you, when you go to different parts of the world, people act different, behave differently. Yeah, and that's why I like to engage in them just to learn what their life's like. It's mad. By the way, if you're watching, peeps, um, we've lost battery in this middle camera. Standard. Rush uh, not being prepared. <laughs> then, well, I did a test run last week and I put it on my vlog. Oh, did you? And even in the test run, I didn't even put the right memory card in. Oh, so, no. So, yeah, they know. But, guys, whoever's watching, um, it's, it's a long one. I'm going to try and keep it under it as, as like, raw as possible. Let me know if you guys are, are liking this. These angles. Andy looks good. <laughs> <laughs> His teeth look good, bruv. You know that. <laughs> Gotta get my money's worth out of it. <laughs> Well, listen, man, we're going we're gonna to probably wrap it up, man. Like, I enjoyed this, bro. Brilliant. No, I really it. appreciate your time. Honestly, it's great to talk, man. I think uh, I think your story is... is uh, 
Yes, yeah. It's mad unique, and I think hopefully anyone who didn't know you now uh, obviously does. But where where can they find your stuff, man? What's what's the, think, web, the website? Obviously, the, the website is www.sportsonscreen.com, where you can see hundreds and hundreds of commercials Go that we've done. Out. And then my Instagram is simply Andy Answer. Wicked. Anything else? Nope. SE Dons, what's SE Dons? SE Dons is www.sedons.com. Yeah. Follow the movement. Just and watch one episode on YouTube and you will be hooked. That's a guarantee. Listen, bruv, you were born to fly. This is my cheesy line that I wanted to say to you all day. <laughs> respect for coming on. Maximum respect. Big up, man. Love, Rashi. Thank you. This guy's a legend, man. Go check him out. Check out his work. His team are incredible. Thank you for watching. Cheers, guys. Peace. Was the knight in shining armor in your movie? Would put your lips on mine and love the end of days now.